Hello everyone, welcome to the Cars and Castles YouTube channel. My name is a Red Master here, and I'm joined today uh, by Echo. He's on this side. Uh, <laughs> and he, of course, coming off of a marvelous performance in Planet of the Pantheon, we invited him on to talk about uh, just a bit more about his experiences behind uh, being in probably one of the largest events that the Cards and Castles franchise has ever seen uh, in terms of tournaments here. Over, you know, 80 players competed, largest prize pool that we've ever had for a series. And, I mean, let's not uh, let's not divert from the man of the hour. Eka, how you doing? Welcome, welcome, to the, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> of course, of course. And let's go ahead and uh, start by discussing, uh, I guess, the the overall inspiration behind you joining the tournament, of course. Um, the call was made out to several people um, to, to join this, this huge event. But I guess what inspired you to uh, pick up and, and compete the, uh, this past weekend in such a large event? Well, I like to think myself of myself as a competitive player, so mm -hmm. I try to join as many events as possible, you know. And so, when you mean comp like you know, uh, a competitive individual, you don't just mean for a game like Cards and Castles. Do you consider yourself competitive in other like genres of games, or? Well, I used to play you like five years ago, but then recently I stopped it. So, so far I just. Right now, I'm just playing Cards and Castles, nothing else. I guess that's where the, the Voice Raider inspiration comes in for with the PFP. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's right. cool. All right, I, I, the competitive background, I guess, is always a nice advantage or an edge to have when going into an event like this. Uh, amongst numerous other people, you want to kind of bring something uh, to the table that is going to be in your best interest and speaking of bringing to the table we saw you rock a formidable uh viking druid deck uh throughout most of when we spectated i believe when the casting team got to you um did you take yeah. that all the way through was that sort of the the main stay choice that you took in uh you know from the beginning knowing that this is the deck yeah I used it from from scratch, but to be honest, I decided to use the deck on the day on the turn, the day of the tournament. So <laughs> it was really? a last minute call. <laughs> yeah. What were you? What was the other? I guess list that you kind of were debating on. What was the the back and forth between? Or do you even do you oh, remember? I, or is it just a blur of that? <laughs> it was no, I remember. It was basically the same combination of factions, you know, Druid and, and, and Vikings, mm -hmm. but without the seer combo. I decided oh. to use the Seer Combo because I saw someone using it on ladder against me. So <laughs> I basically stole his idea. So you weren't <laughs> even the one to kind of like innovate with that or bring it to the table. Uh, no. You got it from someone else. That's interesting. Cause yeah, we, I, exactly. I, listen, it, with how much we see in this game, it's like we can give anyone sort of an association with something. And uh, to, do it, to bring something like that, which no one really talks about, to a stage level like that... It feels like you're going to just be associated with that. Because at least that's what I was thinking to myself. You know, th this dude comes in swinging crazy, you know, combo that we really don't talk about, which was the Northwood Seer. Um, and, I mean, how effective oh. did you feel that was going through? Because, I mean, I don't think I was able to kind of spectate your whole run, obviously. But, you know, feeling through round one, round two, were your victories, like, decisive? Were they confident? Were you uh, going into these finals feeling you know very strong and very you know you know uh, before the tournament started i thought i would win like one or two rounds and then lose because i wasn't very confident on the deck mm -hmm. but then i started winning you know and the, the seed was very oppressive like i was getting very lucky to pull that constantly on turn nine turn ten really just straight up win right away Oof. against everyone basically <laughs> I, listen, you, you certainly you certainly seem to be a very dominant force. One that I thought uh, was just an absolute marvel to watch. Um, seeing not only uh, the the strategy of just very... I, I guess you went into the, the deck very heavy in sort of like this late game mentality. Um, oh, yeah. Very oh, legend heavy, which I, I think I, I'd seen you done previously on on ladder but talk to us about sort of the idea behind taking a very legendary focused deck uh to 
to the event, I guess, like, um, what, what made you commit to, uh, the idea of, you know, alongside the seer combo, which, you know, the seer combo was, uh, phenomenal, but the idea to support that with sort of this legend heavy build, what was the inspiration? Well, to be honest, I'm fairly new to the game. Mm -hmm. So I only played the last two tournaments. I won the last one and on this fairly recent, I finished second place. And both of these times, I use a very heavy deck. It's that... usually what I use on ladder as well. Mm -hmm. So I know that it just works, you know, especially on tournaments where you cannot afford to make mistakes. Just no, of can't. course, yeah. In, a, in such a high pressure situation. And like I said, you, you've you played phenomenally through the games that we managed to catch you in. Um, it was just crazy to see sort of that the high legendary impact uh, throughout the course of your matches. You know, knowing that there's always some kind of big threat lurking is very very dangerous. You know, Life Giver, um, Fenrir was in there, I believe. Uh, oh, yeah. Gaia, which was a hell of an inclusion. I had never seen really Gaia utilized up to that point. Um, all of these just high high impact cards doing a lot of a lot of great cool things. And of course, the Seer combo uh, just kind of pieces it together so well. Um, talk to us about though what your kind of favorite matchup from the event was, or if you if you recall anything that you know you specifically felt proud of during the event. I mean, we saw a dozen a dozen games between everyone, uh, but is there any one that you you really enjoyed? Um, maybe one from your own, or maybe like a tournament matchup you managed to see in general. I don't know if that I don't know if you caught any of the other games besides your own, but yeah, I was able to spectate a few matches as well. To be honest, a lot of people playing uh, using the same tactics. So I like seeing Heron Crane playing with Hyper Argo tactics, you know, with uh, Digger and just drawing so many cards in one turn. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. Yeah, I believe Heron's very focused on sort of those aggro builds. I remember, or actually have just encountered his more recent one, um, the Ninja Necromancer build. Um, not going to show off that oh, deck, yeah, or at sure. least uh, I think I think I made myself a pretty good re uh, recreation. But um, it it does it does work very well. And I feel like his home is very uh, aggressive focused. Um, which yeah, it's we're, really great. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of that here. I, I mean, how would you actually believe? What What are your thoughts on sort of the current ladder competition? I mean, between the players that you run into a lot. Uh, I assume when you're getting into certain sort of ranked matches, you start to familiarize yourself with some people, you know, some specific names even. Um, but talk to us about sort of what you believe uh, is, is more predominant in today's uh, ladder game after having that huge event. It's interesting because uh, I feel like this season is a lot harder to climb than the previous seasons. Mm -hmm. And from the event, I learned that many decks that were used are actually not that good, <laughs> <laughs> including mine. <laughs> like that seer deck I used is really not very good. Yeah, that. <sighs> Damn, it, it, it's it's tough whenever we have a, a you know a crazy event like this and it kind of just reshapes the entire mentality yeah. of the ladder it's to that be expected <laughs> yeah it is well, absolutely sure. to be expected um but let's uh jump back into the the event real quick um because obviously you you yourself have, have said that you, you didn't finish uh first but went out in an incredible series of of games against uh spaff um talk to us about sort of that match up here being in the finals was there any sort of like well was there any sort of uh you know high expectation and pressure you were putting on yourself for that uh but also you know how do you feel going into those games because that definitely felt like a tougher matchup for you yeah before the the grand finals, I was very confident because I defeated him from uh, the winner's bracket, so... Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting to lose four games in a row. <laughs> no, certainly not the case. But, uh, like, in terms of, I guess, were you expecting to kind of go up against something like what you saw a Spaff run in a final scene, in a final scenario? Because... I mean, I had no idea we were going to see a Lucian Undead Knight build uh, that far up in, in the brackets, to truth be told. Same. Uh, I feel like Lucian is always good. 
on the previous tournament, he, he was also a pain in the ass, to be honest. Yeah, he uh, was. I remember that Kuk was uh, Lucian with uh, Ninja, if I'm not mistaken. He was incredibly dominant. And then again, on this previous tournament, uh, Spaff completely dominant with the, the undead combination. Mm -hmm. Lucian is kind of overpowered, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I mean... I can't argue with you there. The I, I guess the, the the cards with more lasting permanent effects like Lucian, um, and to yeah. a lesser degree, um, Andivar, um, the the undead knight. Uh, we don't really get to see him a lot because his weird healing combination is not super prevalent. Uh, at least it's not doing the massive amounts of burn it used to do, um, and with some other changes and whatnot, we don't see him. But Lucian, we know rest of the game turn or rest of the game effects have very very strong impact i would imagine incredibly powerful and thankfully it's only those two cards i believe unless you i don't, I don't recall another one that has a rest of the game effect do you not really hmm. the thing about the lucian deck is that it applies so much early game pressure it has so much card generation mm -hmm. so so difficult to beat them if they have a good early starting hand you know yeah so difficult card generation like the cleric <laughs> i mean we have we what we see the cleric in that one the skeletons um probably more the than it's the pega card the pega card is honestly one of the most broken cards in the entire game it's just mind-blowing really R putting your putting oh, yeah. your uh i guess the the hot take that the pega corn is is the most busted per se i wouldn't maybe one call it a hot take busted. i would say like top five Top five, a long of Nurabon. <laughs> <laughs> Nurabon might be the most overpowered card in the entire game, to be honest. Yeah. Nurabon, the leech. The, the power to spit out that many cards in, in a single moment. I mean, thankfully we don't it's see. Thankfully we don't see as many like Mordenauts off of Nurabon. It's a possibility. It has happened to me via personal experience, and I hated it. Terrible, terrible yeah. thing to walk into. But the 5 8 Knight's very prevalent. <laughs> it very, happens very to me all the time. God, the Grave Knight, man. He's a, he's a chonker. Absolute chonker. Um, so, I guess from, from there, talking about that specific matchup, uh, we saw kind of a, a last move from you. Um, or last sort of attempt to uh, kind of switch up the game a little bit in that final matchup. You went for the Druid Warlock combination, which I I believe yeah. uh, the uh, the idea might have been a bit more. I mean, I, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I imagine because you were in Warlocks, there might have been a bit more an aggressive side to this as well as maybe having the combo. But again, talk to us about sort of the uh, idea to switch up there and and kind of what you wanted to do. Well, at that time, I was pretty hopeless. I did not have many decks built, so <laughs> I just decided to roll the dice because that Warlock deck of mine is not very aggro, mm -hmm. but it does have a very good amount of card generations with like a Burnout and Fort's Revolt and also that Dinosaur spell, I can't remember the name. The Land Before Time, the Raptor of Spawn? Tools. Or... Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I can just play one of those cards, play Burnout, get three cards back, you know. That's a lot of card generation. That is. And we talk about sort of the idea behind, or we talk about card generation a lot. Um, would you say, as a player who has been in sort of a, a high level of play, the, one of the most important things that a deck should be carrying is some sort of card generation. You know, whether it's in the early games, like, you know, Imp and Cleric, or even sort of like the, in these weird uh late game stage combos like the revolt burnout or some other combination of cards that can produce a lot of extra material for you oh absolutely uh i have one rule i think it's it's supposed to be applied for every single deck if you're playing a combo deck you'd rather draw cards than create them uh you know create them yeah yeah, yeah. but if you were playing a a heavy control deck, you'd rather generate those cards rather than drawing them because you don't want to fatigue so early, you know? Right, right, um, right. Control versus control, fatigue can be very uh, determined of the outcome of the match. Hmm. That's a very interesting way to put it. Because, um, I mean, I always knew card generation was, was powerful and it was a really 
prevalent component of a lot of the stuff that's in the higher levels. And I guess no, that that now that you're talking about it like that, it does kind of reign true. So I would say maybe if you're someone who is struggling uh, inside of your matches, maybe look to maybe look to a bit of uh, some generational spice. Maybe I don't know. Maybe uh, again, it always it always depends on what your strategy is. Um, there's a, there's yeah, plenty of things under the sun that would be that would are viable even to this day. I would say. Uh, sure. but let me let me let me go ahead let me kind of we'll, we'll 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 back up for for a second we're gonna go i know wait crazy uh we're going we're going back to the tournament here um but i mean i guess one of the other big questions uh i guess this is this this is probably more of like uh like a feels question uh more or less here but i mean how, how do you how do you feel um, in in your sort of like uh, spirits if that's a good word to put it um, because again you, like you said you're coming off of uh, two top end performances um, you know winning a previous tournament and placing so high placing just under first place in the plight of the pantheon here I mean what does that do for your confidence as a player uh, inside of the game on a regular day on an average, you know, like I'm going to log on to cards and gases. I mean, I imagine it's a huge confidence booster, but I mean, how do, how do you, how do you feel with that on your shoulders? Yeah, I would say that I was very confident until the finals, mm -hmm. but after losing, it made me realize that I had a lot to learn. So I now prepare myself better for, you know, the ladder or for the upcoming events, like other tournaments and stuff. So I'm not gonna be, you know, hopeless if I see Lucian again. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's a good way to put it, making yourself even more formidable. Uh, you know, learn through defeat here, which I think a lot of players, if they are picking up this game for the first time, they should be expecting. Uh, this is, I think, in by no means a game that, um, you know, Sure, it's like simple to pick up and understand basics and rules wise, but when you get down to the gritty of it, when you want to be competitive with it, there's definitely a a fact that you need to have going in. You need that uh, that next level of understanding and the ability to kind of constantly sure. learn and look around you. Would you say that's also true in in this case? Absolutely, it's actually very hard to master this game. N knowing your matchups is everything. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Knowing what's in every faction and what you could be seeing and, you know, the, everything like that. The same, the same thing that you would uh, take going into, you know, other tournaments. Just having the foreground, the background knowledge can be so crucial. Absolutely so crucial. Uh, oh, yeah. But let's, no let's talk about, uh, I guess, some more, some more post-tournament stuff here. Um, and I guess this, this just goes into... Um, how much you're you're willing to to share about um perhaps some some things that you're keeping your eye on per se maybe not something like you know a deck that you're you're running per se um but if i were to hop on um the ladder right now and kind of play out a couple of games here is there anything that you believe to be a deck i should be absolutely watching out for or prepping against uh yeah, more than enough. More than enough. The big bone. More than enough is very str very strong. That card is OP. <laughs> it's a very strong deck. They can just play a bunch of skeletons early game, stall the game, mm -hmm. and then play more than enough and kill you very easily. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've been no stranger to do that to other people as well as have it happen to myself as well. So I can I can see the sentiment on more <laughs> not being a big scary ungus bungus. Uh, but it's good to know that you know it's it's a valid concern and people should be kind of watching out for it um, because I feel like right now we're in an age where there's anything you could run into a whole host of things on on the ladder based on whatever people want to do whatever one people want to bring to the table right so oh yeah just having the the idea of what could be some more prevalent choices i think is is always helpful uh but i guess let's let's go ahead take a bit of a, a lighter stance here and, and kind of 
go through uh, the the event just from again your perspective. I mean, how do you do? You feel like you you had a, a good time do it? Would you recommend, I guess, the the events to others around or other people who play the game? Maybe people who are a bit concerned, a bit more timid on entering things like this. Or anything you want to kind of mention out to those kinds of people? I think it, everyone should play. Even the players, they can learn a lot from the experience. Mm -hmm. And it's actually not that hard to build a competitive deck. It's no. very simple, honestly. Even if you are a new player, what you should do is basically do this. Put four two cost units in your deck, four three cost units in your deck, four five cost four cost units in your deck, and four five cost units in your deck. Then you play the good spells for your, for your factions, uh, some big units, and that's that's good a good tempo deck, you know. It's actually very easy to to build a decent deck. It's kind of like a cool little template that you could apply to multiple factions as well, Absolutely. so people can get a taste Absolutely. of everything. Hmm. You can, you can easily build a veteran using this strategy. Hmm. Or maybe we'll see if someone actually takes that strategy below. I know I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who are watching this for perhaps some sort of insights on how to play um i could totally understand uh that mentality so that seems like a pretty solid foundation to me for someone who also has played for a certain amount of time then uh, yeah i mean that's <laughs> that's a pretty solid <laughs> deck list uh. yeah i mean just i have a small formulas that i use for my deck that's one of them i just don't really use shoe drops a lot because i am a very greedy player but <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it's, that's really it. And speaking of sort of like I guess like a template, we're talking about how it could apply to any faction. Uh, what about let's, let's let's get some more insight on to, to you, Echo, um, a, as an individual. Um, let's let's start out. With, let's, let's let's go for a good one here. Uh, when you came into the game, what was your favorite faction? What was your sort of like you know color that you were like, oh, I I mesh well with this. I like this play style. Or even if you found cards maybe that you just enjoyed, uh, you know, presence style wise. Go go out there. Throw throw out what what uh, what your favorite favorite faction is. Yeah, when I first started, I was pretty cool as I was just searching Discord for decks. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, uh, Cookie and Death's Advocate had some deck lists there, very good for new players. And then one deck came to my attention, named Big Yellow. <laughs> and then, <laughs> you know, the rest is history. <laughs> Oh, you see, I know what deck you're talking about, so I... <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you for, for gravitating towards it. It's a, it's a good list. It's a good list. Oh, yeah. Um, Love me a tournament, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but let's go ahead and go back even a bit further. Um, like you say, you're, you're a person who was coming off of, of Yu-Gi-Oh, I guess... Or not even, like, I guess because this game hasn't been out for, you know, over five years. I mean, what what would you say is your last sort of endeavor? And how did you kind of stumble upon into our world of Cards and Castles here? Well, to be completely honest, I wasn't playing anything competitive for a while. Mm -hmm. But there is a game on PlayStation 2 that I play constantly. And there are some similar features. It's called Yu-Gi-Oh! The, du the Duelist of the Roses. Ooh. The board mechanics are very, very similar. <laughs> So, you know, when I saw this game, I was very interested. Then you kind of just picked it up and the rest is history, right? Oh, yeah. That's cool. That is that is really cool. I always like to kind of give a bit more of a, an insight to, to the players behind the, the, the decks and the names here. Because we always showcase uh, players who, uh, you know, players who are just, to the people, just names. Uh, but learning a bit more about you and and uh you know having the chat with you so far has been really cool to kind of just understand the personality behind the account and uh to see your mentality and all that it, it's it's good it absolutely is is fantastic um but hmm I'm trying to think of where to go see this is this is the part of the interview where i'm like 25 minutes deep but i'm I think most of my questions were expanded upon. So, <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't. Do you? How about the? You know, Echo. Do you? Do you have anything for for the people, perhaps out there? I mean, it might be a good point for us to kind of 
uh, wrap things around full circle here. Um, you know, you say you're going to be in probably more events as more come out until we know about the next one. Uh, but I guess, what do you want to leave leave the people with who are tuning in now and kind of, you know, have who have been watching up until this point here? Is there anything you kind of want to leave them? Well, I think we, we talked about a, a good amount of things. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I'm going to leave for new players is if you want to craft a legendary craft, uh, Zeus. Zeus. Zeus is absolutely crazy. <laughs> it's a staple in every single deck. Now you know where that I think I think since Zeus has come out, I feel like he's just everywhere. And that goes to the same for a lot of new cards. I love how a lot of people have been picking up on some some fresh tools to expand their their arsenals and to see them all fit into place is really cool. But Zeus, you recommend Zeus? Absolutely. As the first card to craft, absolutely. Well, the second go. one would be not there because not there is absolutely broken. <laughs> <laughs> one step at a time though. Give them give them the most the most useful and then they'll expand from there. Uh but with that folks. Well, Oh, you have anything? No, no, that's 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 about it. <laughs> All right, so I guess with that, uh, folks, we're gonna close it out here. Thank you guys so much for checking out our, our one on one uh, with Echo. We appreciate having you guys here today, and be sure to check out more of the uh, stuff we have going on here in the community of Cards and Castles. You can check out some of our former tournaments here on the very channel of Cards and Castles. Uh, Planet of the Pantheon will also be linked below if you want to go check that out with the event that Echo uh, was also a part of. And uh, yeah, be sure to go ahead and check out the discord for more cards and castles community content um games over on steam and ios and android if you want to buy it for yourself it's been running uh, down below some games for you guys as well so if you like what you see here if you're stumbling upon this video and have no idea what cards and castles even is it's been down here the whole time as sort of a thing to watch along with as we've been talking here so uh yeah but with that i, th I think that's gonna be it for me i've been red master here with echo until next time guys take it easy